in a few copies, but I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll make a start. Um, the West Midlands Regional Board um, also, in, in addition to laying on the CPD um, training, promotes uh, education and research. And as I said, we have a number of representatives from uh, the universities of Wolverhampton, Birmingham, and Coventry within the region. And we did promoting our uh, research. We have, over the last few years, um, awarded a, a certificate to a student um, presenting the best dissertation um, and, um, in, in the field of environmental health. And this year, it's been Hannah Whitlock, who is from, or was from Birmingham uh, University, but now is working for Birmingham City Council. So she initially is going to do a presentation on her dissertation, and then we'll do a brief award ceremony after. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so as you can see, um, my dissertation topic was on health and safety in nail salons, um, which focused on nail technicians' understanding of control of substances, health to health, and many regulations 2002. Um, so, why did I actually decide to choose this topic? Well, for a number of years I've actually used the services provided by the nail industry. Um, I chose acrylic nails, and I've summarised my experience of using the services provided by the industry um, in the four bullet points there. So as you can see, I already had an interest in the industry. Um, so then I started carrying out um, a bit of um, research, and I started to realise that there would um, be highlighted a potential issues with health and safety in the industry, um, most notably um, the CIH back in 2006 said that one in five nail bars could pose a health to, um, oh, sorry, a risk to health. Um, and as such, I wanted to see whether this trend was perhaps similar today. So, which is why I started my research. Um, so, what are the real issues with health and safety? Well, first of all, I think it's important to explain why nail salons are regulated under the COP regulations. So, as I mentioned earlier, I had acrylic nails done. Um, to make the acrylic nail, you have to combine a monomer liquid called ethyl methacrylate with a polymer powder, which then forms a paste which is shaped over the natural nail, and then that's filed down to create the acrylic nail. Um, now, ethyl methacrylate is regulated under COSH because it's been linked to a number of health effects, um, which includes allergic contact dermatitis, sensitization, and um, respiratory irritation. Um, and actually, as we saw earlier on the previous slide, you did actually experience a brief spell of allergic contact dermatitis on my inner elbows and my eyelids when I actually had the acrylic nails applied to my natural nail. Um, and as such, with my knowledge as well of potential health and safety skills gap within the industry, I decided that I wanted to see how the risks were being managed within the industry in relation to chemical use. So as I began conducting um, further research, I found that it mainly um, was from the US and tended to focus on the health effects of the chemicals used um, on the employees who were using the chemicals um, in the industry, rather than actually looking at how these chemicals <coughs> were being controlled. Um, I did find a UK paper which had been written, which again was also very much health effects based. However, it did note that there was a gap in the research in relation to um, how these risks are being controlled, and in particular to, um, in relation to now technicians' awareness and understanding of the COSH, re COSH regulations. Um, and therefore, this is where I decided to focus my research on establishing, establishing whether there is a, uh, a lack of knowledge and understanding in relation to the regulations. <coughs> so I'll just give you a brief um, rundown of, of the COSH regulations. Um, this is the diagram which presents. Um, all are applicable to um, the nail industry. However, it's my opinion that potentially um, number six and number seven, which is to create a risk assessment and then to prevent and control the risks which will be identified, are probably the most important um, of the regulations in relation to the nail industry. Um, although having said that, if there's a failure to um, meet the other regulations, then the risk assessment which is carried out, out by the, the nail industry is... Um, likely not to meet the super sufficient standard um, as outlined in the contrary practice. Now, the actual cost regulations are quite lengthy, 
Um, and as such, the Health and Safety Executive and Havia, which is the Hair and Beauty Industry Authority, have come up with their own documentation to try and facilitate the understanding of the regulations. Um, as you can see, the Havia have created their own practical guide guidance and the HSE have done their cost essentials for service and retail. Um, both guidance documents are comprehensive and they, te they basically lay out the information of how you can adequately control the risks which are associated with chemical use in the nail industry. Although when I began reviewing the documents, I did find that there were a number of discrepancies um, within the two documents in relation to control measures which were um, approved as being um, good at controlling the risks associated with chemical use. Um, so firstly, I found that the HC guidance said that dust masks should not be used for controlling exposure to nail dust. However, Javier said the dust masks were actually absolutely fine, so there was one discrepancy there. And then similarly, in relation to advice about local exhaust ventilation for controlling um, chemical risks, the HSC states that local exhaust ventilation should be used for controlling odour. However, Javier says that it should not be used for controlling odour, but for controlling vapour and exposure to dust. So depending on which guidance the, the nail salon may go to um, for determining which local exhaust ventilation they should use, it may mean that the choice they make um, can undermine the actual control measure which they are trying to achieve. Um, and finally, what I noted was although the health and safety executive says that their guidance is a crazy of the most important parts of the posh regulations, it does actually fail to make any uh, mention of the need for a risk assessment, which I found quite odd considering the risk assessment is most important, obviously, to identify what risks there are in the business to then be able to control them. So once I've established um, what previous research had been done, I then set out to um, <coughs> set my own aim for my research and my objectives and hypotheses. So this diagram just displays um, my own objectives and hypotheses. Um, as you can see, my overall aim was to determine the depth and extent of nail technicians' knowledge and understanding of the college regulations and its impact on the implementation and success of health and safety procedures in the UK. Um, I set out by collecting my data um, through a self-completion questionnaire, which I actually posted onto an online nail forum called Nail Peak. Um, and I also sent um, a number of questionnaires out to um, nail salons across the UK in the post in the hope that I would actually receive some back. Um, overall, I have a response rate of 80, which may not seem that, that um, brilliant, but when compared to previous research, um, it's actually quite encouraging and, and comparable similar um, response rates are being received. Um, so I then, um, once I've got my data back, I collated it and carried out analysis. I um, was then able to come up with some key findings for my research. Um, I had eight key findings in together, and I'm going through those now. Um, so starting with the first one, which is actually quite a positive one, um, I did find that um, there was an improvement in our technicians' awareness of the cost regulations, um, as to that which was found in previous research. However, after that point, I then found actually there weren't such positive um, results in relation to health and safety. And I did actually know there were a number of deficiencies um, within health and safety in the nail industry. Um, so I found that over 50% of my respondents had a lack of training in the correct use of PPE, most um, notably in the correct use of um, gloves, so that by putting them on correctly and removing them correctly so as to prevent the um, contamination of your hands with chemicals. Um, this was particularly concerning because there have been a number of research that have been carried out which, which, said, which has said that if you are trained correctly in the use of gloves, then you can um, significantly reduce the likelihood of having no, um, nose, throat and skin irritations. Um, furthermore, it's also quite concerning as the Health and Safety Executive had previously carried out a campaign called Bad Hand Day, which was basically trying to reach out to those within the industry um, about the importance of using gloves to prevent the um, allergic contact dermatitis. Um, and the fact that this campaign has been carried out and yet there's still issues within the, in the beauty industry of um, a lack of training on the use of gloves, so it's quite concerning. Having said that, the Barrow Friday campaign was aimed at hairdressers and the potential that those in the nail industry may have been missed out. And moving on to my third point, um, I did find that 78% of my respondents were using local exhaust ventilation in their businesses to control exposure to chemicals. 
Um, which is quite encouraging, although when I did my um, analysis, I found that over a quarter of those weren't using the local source ventilation at all times, and therefore, although the local source ventilation is there, they're not using it at all times, so they're not actually adequately controlling the risks in their business. Um, it was found in previous research that those who used local source ventilation, um, as opposed to those who didn't, could actually reduce exposure to chemicals by up to 10 times. And this is actually research which was done back in 1997, so who's to say there's be any improvements in the local source ventilation that that um, reduction could be a, a lot greater um, nowadays. So it is very important that um, ventilation is used at all times. Um, I established from the questionnaires that the risk assessments which were being carried out were not meeting the suitable and sufficient standard, um, since nail technicians were failing in a number of um, aspects for completing um, all aspects of a risk assessment. Um, and furthermore, I also found that those who were required to document their risk assessments because they employed five or more people were not actually doing so. Um, my point, moving on to point six, um, part of my research, I also looked into um, training of nail technicians um, through accredited nail training courses, so achieving um, level two or level three in MVQ nail services. Now, my initial review of the, of the, um, the training suggested that the health and safety aspect of the training was particularly comprehensive, although my results from my questionnaire, when I asked if people had training, um, and then further questions which then related to health and safety management within the, in, in the industry, it suggested that although they were being trained um, in level two, the application of that training in, in the actual industry was not taking place. Um, and finally, as um, so, um, number seven, um, as I said previously, there's the discrepancies within the um, guidance documentation between Harvey and HSC. So, from my key findings, I then moved on to trying to establish recommendations of where I felt that potentially health and safety standards within the industry could be improved. Um, so, firstly, I felt there should be a greater focus um, on the interactive risk assessment formulation in now courses. Now, I based this recommendation on some previous research, which I've been carried out by Hartley and Booth, who found that standards of risk assessment, um, which were produced by differing professional groups um, through simulation act um, activities, including role play and video training, were much greater than those who were just taught in a, a lecture theatre in terms of um, the risk assessments. Um, my point two, I feel that a stronger relationship needs to be had between local authorities and now salons. I think that sometimes potentially now salons may find that they can't actually go to the authorities, <coughs> they may just view them as a regulatory authority who can take enforcement action. Actually, maybe where local where, where now salons have been struggling with health and safety issues, it, it may be beneficial for them to come to local authorities for advice on how to control risks. Um, point three, again, refers to the deficiency between the guidance of Javier and the HSC. Um, I therefore feel it would be beneficial for the two um, authorities to come together and maybe review their guidance and come up with some guidance which is more consensus with one another, so it's not so confusing for those in the industry. Um, point four relates to training and the correct use of PP in, in nail courses. Um, I feel that because of what I found from my questionnaires that there's a lack of training, um, although um, within the nail um, industry and the correct use of PPE, I feel there should be a greater focus in the nail courses on this to ensure that what's learned within the nail courses can then be transferred into the industry and not, not lost in the industry. Um, point five. Um, I briefly touched upon in my research on the fact that there's actually some non-accredited courses out in the industry. So while there's um, the city guilds and such, they, they do the accredited courses for level two and level three MBQ. There are some courses which you can just access online, and it ultimately you, you receive and you achieve the same um, level, and then you can still go off into the industry um, and, and carry out nail services. But I feel that potentially they're quite unregulated. Um, it's unknown as to what the health and safety content of these courses are, and it can be interesting to see what, what that is and if greater regulation is needed to ensure that if people are undertaking those online courses, that they are receiving the correct health and safety training before they go into the business. Um, I noted during my research that um, 
only London um, boroughs where nail salons open, do they require compulsory registration with the local authority? And basically, this compulsory regis registration is based on the proviso that those working in, the, in that particular salon have the correct training appropriate with what activities they're carrying out. Um, so it, perhaps it would be interesting for these to be UK-wide UK registration of now sounds so that if we can ensure that those in the nail industry are actually um, being trained. Um, I also noted during my research that um, a lot of nail salons are not receiving the material safety data sheets for the chemicals, chemicals which they're using in, in the um, their salons. The material safety data sheets basically explains what the chemicals are and what the chemical effects are. So the, the, local, you know, the, the nail salons aren't actually receiving those, those material safety data sheets. It's kind of putting them um, in a position where it's undermining their, their ability to actually control the um, risk, so they're actually unaware of what risks the chemicals present. And therefore I felt that perhaps it, there should be a greater level of regulation of those companies that buy the products to ensure that material safety data sheets are actually being delivered. And finally, I thought that potentially there could be a possibility for local authorities and Javier and the HTC to all join together and try to organise industry away days to capture a large portion of the industry to then go to <coughs> training on the importance of health and safety within the industry. Now, this part of my presentation wasn't actually something which I which I conducted um, within my research. Um, but I felt that it was important to mention because um, I've now been in the local authority for over a year and I'm now aware of actually what happens within within um, you know, sort of the real world and whether my research actually can be um, linked to it. So at the moment there's a local authority circular which um, is a framework for local authorities and how they can target their um, health and safety interventions in terms of um, health and safety reports that, that come in. Um, I won't go through the whole thing, but the beauty sector strategy is one of the important aspects of the, um, um, the local authority sector, and as such I wanted to see where it fits into my research. Um, so, what I decided to do was, I looked to establish where it fit into my research, so at the top is the aims of the beauty sector strategy, and underneath, I tried to set the recommendations I spoke about earlier to see whether these recommendations could actually be used to potentially meet those aims. Um, I think I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to go through every single one, but as you can see, I've managed to fit at least one of my recommendations into reach, meet, meeting the aims. Um, what I need, do need to say, actually, is um, part of the beauty sector strategy is that it potentially shouldn't be practical work that's conducted. Um, in order to um, establish this issue within the um, beauty sector, but it should actually be um, in relation to um, reader reports and any complaints that come in about the beauty sector, then that they should be responded to in that sense. And my concern is, however, is will those reactive work be created? Um, insofar as I know that when I had my allergic contact dermatitis, I personally didn't think I should complain to the local authority because I thought it's just, just the fact that I reacted to the chemicals rather than they're actually being potentially a result of the fact that the chemicals are not being managed. So potentially there's going to be other people who think the same and therefore the reactive work isn't created, then there will um, be a possibility of actually intervening in health and safety in the beauty sector. Um, there is a, actually an aspect of the local authority circular which states that proactive inspections can take place where intelligence that risks are not being effectively managed is present. Well, I'd like to say that my research potentially is um, evidence that um, kind of, you know, there isn't, um, the risks aren't being effectively managed and potentially that could be a reason why we can do practical work in the beauty industry. Having said that, again, it is at the discretion of the local authorities um, not to carry out practical inspections, particularly in the light of the fact that the resources available in local authorities um, and perhaps it's not seen as such a high risk area as opposed to other, other industries um, within the um, Okay. Um, these are just a few examples of councils that have actually done proactive work, which is encouraging. Um, letter blocks and surveys. I don't actually know what the results were, but it's just nice to see that there is some proactive work going on in the beauty sector. Um, I'm not sure how much time I've got left, but basically I've just got a few recommendations for further research. Again, focusing on the ethnic now, um, run now science, potentially there's language barriers which may affect um, understanding of COSH. Mobile nail salons, is it possible to actually control the risks in a mobile environment? 
Um, looking at health and safety standards of um, licensed salons versus non licensed salons for those in London versus the rest of the UK. And thank you for listening. I'm going to rush too much at the end. I was just aware of it at the time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hannah. Um, I think probably practitioners found that very useful, uh, informative presentation. So, um, well done, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Zita Lynch, who's a lecturer, senior lecturer at Birmingham University. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hannah. And um, um, one of the things we want to do um, from the West Midlands region is to promote uh, student research. So, we try to promote and support students with their research. and. Um, one of the things we did last year was we uh, decided to, um, that we should put forward a student prize for the best dissertation in the region. Now, the dissertations are put forward by the students themselves, and the prize is £250, so it's well worth the students putting forward their dissertation for this prize. Um, we had a number of dissertations put forward, with all, all which were very high quality, and the panel uh, were very surprised actually at how good the dissertations were. But I hope you can see um, from this presentation why Hannah has won the prize and congratulations to Hannah for winning the prize. Um, we, we put out a call again for this year for the prize, so uh, any students that have completed their dissertations this year in the region, um, we would encourage you to put forward applications for the prize again this year. Um, so congratulations to Hannah, and we've got a certificate uh, for you here. Thank you.